Let's just throw a quick video together. Here's this mains isolator switch I was talking about in the last video. Let's have a look inside. So what these are used for is to isolate the main supply coming in and out of a house. So there's two switches for the two poles, like so. You've got an indicator there. By the way, if you want to have a look at a video regarding this pure sine wave inverter, just click somewhere around here and you can go over and watch it. But don't forget to come back. So this, you see, feels quite chunky. In operation, you've got some terminals here that the hot and neutral or the live and neutral go in goes onwards to your distribution board your indicators there quite smart what the idea in this video is to get rid of these pot rivets here open her up have a look inside but before I do that i want to run a couple of hundred amps through it 12 volt dc using this inverter and i want to see what kind of operation after disconnect, you know, disconnection, and see what happens regarding any spark gaps inside. So here is the very attractive battery bank right there. I'm going to wire this in place of this 300 amp blade fuse just there, and I'm going to measure the amps using this clamp meter. But when I go to disconnect the supply, I'm going to use one of these VDE pliers, which protect yourselves by touching live terminals because the special insulation on the handles are very important to use so all i'm going to do is disconnect it because this inverter has microcontrollers in it it won't boot up straight away if i had a load of four kilowatts for example if i switch it on it won't connect up but what i'm going to use to wire these wires up i'm going to use a bolt put through there attach the 70 milli squared cables to this and then try disconnecting it. A little limited for space but here's the finished article. Okay here we go let's engage power. Well, it's, in, it's powered up, so let's run the load through it. Right, I'm gonna start the load. I'm gonna use about four kilowatts. I'm not gonna run it for long. I just want to disconnect the, the supply. So there's two kilowatts. Coming over to do the four kilowatt. Right. So it's clicked out, so obviously the bolts aren't conducting very well going through. So it did trip out. It does actually look a bit bent that as well. Let's check the temperature. That's normal, let's try again. Right, after a bit of pottering around and a bit of trial and error, Three kilowatts is too much, same with four, so I'm going to go for two kilowatts. As I keep saying, it'd be these cheap bolts that I'm using in the terminal, so I'm just going to use two kilowatts and then go from there. Right, so you can see what, 218 amps going through there. Let's check some temperatures. Right, so can you see there, 60 degrees C. It's not so bad, oh there you go, 108 degrees C. So it's not designed for this temperature, that's in Fahrenheit. So let's be, as, as you can see, it's heating up and resistance increases and it's cutting out after it heats up. So it's just cut out on us. Let's try one more. Right, let's be quick on this one. Put the two kilowatt load on. I'm going to come round and <laughs> beat me to it. There's a couple for the blooper reel. Right, let's try one more time. I've got the load ready. I'm 
right by the switch. So let's turn the two kilowatts on and then check it. Let's not check temperatures, let's just turn it off. Alright, so 208. No, it's done it again. I'm not going to give up, but I'm going to limit it. I'm going to put a thousand watts through it. So it's going to come to just over a hundred amps. What this thing's rated at anyway. I presume putting 200 odd amps through it hasn't done it any good. But luckily we've got a clean terminal that's not been touched. So we'll be able to see the difference between the used side and the clean side. So here's a thousand watts. So 106 amps. Let's isolate. Hopefully from that we'll get a little bit of a spark gap damage inside to see the difference. Our tools are ready to go, let's get this open. So looking at this here, I don't know if you notice this, but there's a hole through there. And that is so you can put a lock through and it prevents you for physically switching the device on. Which is quite nifty. But let's get Dremel in these points out. Here we go. Switch this on. There we go. So that was quite a job, but let's have a look inside. So it's probably all going to be spring loaded, so I'm going to be very careful, like straight away. That is from there. Okay. So this is actually the side we were using before. So we engage the lock. pushes the contacts into place and then slowly bring it back and it disconnects the contacts so a lot simpler than I was expecting a lot simpler so let's have a let's put that back on there flip it over to this side yeah so exactly the same so this is the brand new side never been touched let's get one of these out for comparison yeah so it all looks pretty immaculate climatic well never mind eh at least um yes it's uh, that's spring loaded so it's definitely always going to be touching there nice beef beefy copper plates i suppose it'll have to be there for being well, i suppose it's brass terminals there oh. quite interesting the, uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a like. Subscribe if you fancy it. Uh, I'll put another video out next week. Not sure what it'll be yet, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. Cheers, guys.